Hi, my name is Audrey Torres, and this is my last video for the Lamar program. Um, for this video, what I decided to do was to be able to create a agenda that was for a faculty meeting. And um, in the next part of the video, you'll actually see me uh, presenting for the faculty meeting. My principal decided what we would do is instead of doing one huge session with over 100 teachers, that I would instead have the session broken up by departments and go to those departments and have the faculty meeting instead of us all meeting in one big group. And the reason for that mainly is because of the fact that I could give more individual attention to the actual teachers because it was such a topic that needed attention, which was ESL accommodations. Um, furthermore, I was able to um, ask the teachers questions, provide them answers, and then from that, be able to see what we need to do for our next faculty meeting. Maybe about 40 web students. Okay, so um, we're going to get started. Uh, this is something that was designed for the faculty uh, meeting, but instead we decided to break it up into smaller groups so that you guys could have more one-on-one -on -one time with me if you needed it. Um, we're going to talk about the ELL accommodations um, that are required. Um, the first thing that you can do is if you have your laptop, go ahead and go to It's Learning to Hub so that you can find the courses for Sam Houston Professional Development. Everything I'm going to be using today will be on that site so you can reflect back to it, but I'm also available to answer any questions that you all have. So again, it's under courses and it's called Sam Houston Professional Development and Service. And then I'll push you on that I'll walk you through the folder to get to. And the purpose of the EL accommodations are um, several reasons. One, we need them for us to determine that the students will qualify for um, situations like extended time on STAR, bilingual uh, dictionaries, and items like that. Uh, most of your students aren't taking STAR, but you might find a few that are retaking your class, possibly, that are taking the U.S. history. So also they'll be used to show what accommodations you're using in the classroom uh, in regards to uh, making sure that they're getting accommodations, um, it's also going to be a use for you, like if a student, a ESL student is a family in class, and you try multiple accommodations and they're still not being successful because it's all home, then you know you have more proof on your reasoning showing that you're trying all these things and it's the student just won't do the work, right? So it, it can be used as that too. All right. So once we're inside the San Houston Development Learning Service, we're going to go to the folder that says LPAC Lab PSL. And inside that is another folder that's called ELL Accommodations January 2016. So LEP, LPAC LEP, and then ELL Accommodations. Inside the folder, you're going to find the PowerPoint that I'll be using today, the actual document that's a linguistic accommodation form that's fillable but not fillable. So for some reason, they made it fillable where you can go type in your name your grade level, my name as the LPAC person, and all that, and then just print it once, and then you just write the kids' names on it, or go back and type them individually. Um, there's a, another handout called Who is ELL in my class that we'll be using today that will show you how to look up your class status roster, which is a really neat um, situation that you can check out who's ESL in your class, who is fed, uh, if you're at risk, if you're at free lunch, it gives you all kinds of information for just your class on each page, okay? So those students later on, they'll help us determine who you have to fill the form for, because not every student is going to fill this form out for. What is the first folder? The first folder is, is the yes, that's the name of the course, and then you go to LPAC Lab ESL folder. So scroll down underneath all those dates, and you're going to see a couple folders, and one that says e, or L P A C L E P. and then it's out there. P -E -S -E -S uh -huh. Exactly. And then you'll go into the ELL accommodation January 2016. Okay. okay. So also there's a handout in there, and I'm about to give you a handout too that has all these copies in there for you. It'll show you how to look at your TELPAC and if you're interested in LPAC information. And I'll walk you through that. And there's also a for e access guide that kind of explains 
because you can get the same information from Chancery or from A4E, whichever you're more comfortable with. But I'm going to show you the Chancery website. All right, so we're all good so far? All right, I'm going to hand you out these um, handouts that have some of the same information in case you need to reflect those.
chance or more once you figure out where it is it will be one of the most useful things yeah. you can possibly use on campus. Since she first showed this, I have used this report across the board. Mm -hmm. That's what I think it makes it easier than a brief. It's all in one document right there. And you know, as you get new students in for ESL, they might not be labeled as ESL for the first 20 days because we have 20 days to get them in the system. So, um, Mr. Salazar, if you have students on your list for World Geography ESL and they're brand new, they're not labeled yet as ESL. So just fill in your report for all those things. <laughs> well, I have to first get all the documents. I have to hold an LCAP that has four people in it, me and the parents and two other um, teachers that are here, or administrators, and we have all the documentation and we have input into the system. So, so when you go to the report, you get a drop down in the summary? Uh, for some reason, it's just on my classes to do. So I have to go out and go back in. Um, okay. Okay. So I haven't been acting funny lately, but I'm talking a lot, especially when I'm trying to pull the report. Disadvantaged, 
um, GT, at risk, CTE, then large statuses. So you'll learn a lot about your students from that information there too. Did your somewhat pull up? Okay. Kind of backed up the entire thing. Yeah. Okay. Go to, do you have Google? Mm -hmm. Do Use Google instead. And then I'll help you too. So you'll be okay. We'll go through yours before I look at it and make sure you have yours. Do you use Google for cancer? You know, I use my um, Internet Explorer's not working. I go over to Google and then it works. I don't know why. <laughs> this is what I use that is open. Uh -huh. I yeah. Yeah, I use usually Internet Explorer, but then sometimes if it's not working, like my chantry has been horrible lately. It's been like spinning and spinning and thinking. So I'll shut it down totally and I'll go to Google and it'll open up. And then I sometimes was, Google will freeze and I'll have to go with, I don't know what's wrong with the internet. <laughs> I only use Internet Explorer. I usually only use Explorer. And especially at home, I only use Explorer. But for some reason, Google's been working lately when Explorer won't. So, because I wasn't able to pull transcripts for a while. There's a full second or two second lag. Yeah. In every Internet Explorer. Yeah. Yes. I love Chrome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's no. been a order. Well, like instructional library, does mm -hmm. the numbers mean something? Like ignore the numbers. The numbers. Number. No, ignore the numbers. I'll confuse you. Um, because they're not in correct order, because we added a uh, preliterate section and gave it a different number. So only pay attention to the words in the instructional level. Okay. It'll either say beginning, intermediate, advanced, or it'll say transitional, or it'll say advanced high. Remember, transitional, advanced high are the same thing. They changed the coding in Chancery, so next year you shouldn't even see this word transitional because I'm going to try to make everybody that's at higher level label and advanced high so it's not confusing. Okay, you want to switch to the next slide? Thanks. Okay, with that said, make sure that you know that in this box, LTAC administrator, you can put Dean Torres, A Torres, whatever you want. That's my name, it goes there. School year is 15-16, uh, however you want to write it. Your course name goes here. Your grade level of the student, 9th or 10th grade. Your teacher name goes here and your signature goes here. All of this stuff is pre-fillable, except for the student name. You can either type those in and print it one by one, or you can type this once and hand write the student name, okay? This um, part doesn't include the ID. So if you can please remember to stick the student's ID number on there somewhere in the middle, that would be great because we have students with multiple same names. Um, and hopefully they'll add the ID next time. <laughs> um, in this section right here that's talking about telepaths, we're going to actually look at that in a minute to make sure you understand how to read your telepaths information. Um, additionally, we have all the accommodations that are listed here, and you guys already received that training online about what those are and how to use them. But if you need any help, let me know. Um, the reason that you need to understand their ESL level <clears throat> is because it tells you what accommodation suggestions they have for you. So for example, look at number one that says provide native language support. Um, if you see a P, B, or I, that means pre lit beginner, or intermediate, that native language support could be suggested. So maybe you might have to have some translated materials. But if they're advanced or advanced high, they should not need that, okay? So anything, if you've got a student that's a beginner, look for anything that has a B, and those are suggestions, you can use anywhere between one to all of them, okay? You choose what you're actually using as a student. Then you would go into column four, because we're in cycle four, and you would just use a check mark if you were using it. So for number two, graphic organizers, you know you're using that, put a check mark on the fourth column. You can backtrack if you want, but the main thing is that you're copying from fourth column, and then if the fifth cycle comes up, you're doing it in the fifth column. The last cycle, you're doing it in the sixth column, and it's just a simple check mark. Oh, okay. Each, each of those numbers are the cycles. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and the most important ones for testing reasons are at the bottom where it says assessment, and it's the one about extended time, and the one about dictionaries, multilingual, you know, multilingual or bilingual dictionaries. So those are important to mark and make sure that you're offering those if a student needs extended time. Extended time can be 10 minutes, it can be an extra day, it can be whatever you think is appropriate, okay? Uh, and not all students need that, but if you're using it, please mark it. Okay, are we good so far? Okay, go ahead and flip to the next one. All right, so again, our levels are beginning, intermediate, advanced, and advanced high. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing are what are scored on telepaths. If you look on your document, you're going to see how the telepaths is graded. For example, listening is 10%, speaking is 
Writing is 30% and reading is 50%. They put all those scores together and mesh them together and calculate their composite score. Um, the tricky thing about the tell pass test is that a English teacher that has them in class is grading their listening, speaking, and writing off of a rubric. So if they don't grade them correctly or they feel sorry for them and change it, you don't get an accurate level or they could be grading too hard. So you really have to judge the kid in your class by getting to know them, but this will at least give you an idea of where they were last year in March when they were graded. Um, this reading test is online and it's scored online. Sometimes the kids play on the test, that can affect their score. Sometimes they take it serious, but it's 50%. And so all of these are important and that's why it's important to do listening, speaking, reading, and writing in every lesson. Okay, go ahead and switch it. And this just gives you more definitions and examples of um, key features. So if you want to look over that power, that PowerPoint slide later on, uh, my help you, plus I can help you if you want. Okay, go ahead. All right, so we're going to look up how to do the tell pass information. Uh, take one of your student ID numbers from your roster. There is a document inside your packet that shows how to do this process by typing in the student's name and going to test results and following the directions to locate cell pass 2015. And then I'll show you how to read it. So you get to your Oh, you did. Okay, H plus that is wrong. Okay, right here is the plus name. There's a column. And then hit run. Okay, so when you get to this point, did everybody find where the test results were on the blue column that's on the left side? Did you say see it? Um, for the student, you're going to go to where you can tell pass. It has star information and tell pass. But find tell pass and find the last entry, which for this year it'll be 2015, and click on that. I am, mm -hmm. I am still seeing the student's name. You see class, you see my student? Yes. Go to the test results here. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I chose the student. Uh-huh. I'm still learning about the name to get out of it. Yeah, what we're going to do is just going to minimize it. Now we're going to go back over here to the student and click here. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and type in either his ID number or his name. Mm -hmm. Him. Now we're going to go to test results, which is right here. And you've got a document that will walk you through this, okay? And you're going to look for this one past 2015. Click on that. And this is going to be your data that's going to talk about right here. Did you get it? All right, perfect. Now, if you have a kid that just started this year or was not in HIC last year, their information won't be in here. All right, take one of your kids that has a YX right here, this one kid. Take down his ID number, I'll show you how to walk through that. So now that you have his listening, speaking, reading, writing, composite rating, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the middle section here, and you're going to circle where it says listening. This kid was advanced high, so you circle advanced high. If yours says beginning, you circle beginning. You find the speaking section, you circle that the reading, the writing, and the composite. This will also tell you information. And remember, listening, speaking, and writing is created by a rubric and not a numerical system. So the reading is going to have a numerical system. It'll tell you how many questions they got right compared to how many were asked. So it'll tell you a little more information about your student for listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Also for us to show games this year, they need to go up one level from their tell pass. So if you got to this advanced, you need to go to advanced high. A beginning, you need to go to intermediate. Okay? So as much practice as they can get in English for listening, speaking, reading, and writing, that's going to help them more to move up. All right, you got all your students? Mm -hmm. Okay, go to minimize that now. <laughs> go back to the student here.
Um, I'm available and I'm in room 113 and let me know whatever you need.